transcription is a difficult task. It starts out difficult because you're learning to treat speech phonetically instead of just communicatively. This means paying attention to things you normally ignore, subtle de details of pronunciation like aspiration and nasalization, and it means ignoring things you normally pay attention to, like what the person's trying to tell you or how they're feeling about it. And it continues to be difficult because as you advance, you're able to, and often expected to, pick up on even finer distinctions and a wider range of sounds. So in this video, we're going to make that task a little bit easier uh, by using Prat to do our transcription. So instead of having to do uh, real-time transcription or even just transcribe by ear without uh, technological augmentation, um, we're going to be able to hear and view the sounds in different ways and take our time about it to really zero in on the details that are important. Now, uh, how do we do this? Uh, we're going to tra tackle part of a transcription together and see how we can marshal our resources to complete the task. Uh, one of the resources is, is uh, a talking uh, online IPA chart. Now, the great thing about this is that you can click on a sound and hear it produced. Da, par da. Right, and you can check out different ones. Pa, a la, ra, a ra. Okay. Uh, and I like this. This is, helps to calibrate your expectations when you are observing a particular sound in your transcription. You can compare it against these reference pronunciations, and it has the full IPA chart here, so quite a wide range of things that you can use to uh, check your, your uh, guesses against. Um, right? uh, you need to make sure that you have your sound file ready to go. Uh, any bit of speech is going to do uh, is okay for practice. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be using a sound uh, clip from Haida put the link in the notes for this video uh, from where I got it. Uh, and I find a sentence or so is a good length to practice as a, a, a session of transcription practice. It's uh, long enough to get you thinking about a variety of different things, but not so long to be exhausting, depending on the sentence, of course. All right, so launch prac, uh, and you get your sound. I've actually already gone through the process of hitting annotate, creating a text grid with the bits that I want. So that's what I have here. Select the sound in the text grid, hit view and edit. There we go. Uh, so remember that in Prot you by default have a waveform, uh, spectrogram, and your uh, annotation if you're viewing sound and text grid together. Uh, now, the first thing I like to do, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Actually, the first thing I like to do, this spectrogram looks a little bit... Uh, it's okay. Uh, you can adjust the settings a little bit. Sometimes slightly different settings will be better visually. Uh, so in this case, what I often do is I change the window length to uh, 10 milliseconds from uh, 5 milliseconds. What that does, you'll see it changes the resolution a little bit, you get a slightly finer frequency resolution, but you still have fairly good time resolution. That's the trade-off. A longer window length gets you better frequency resolution and worse time resolution. Uh, shorter window length, the opposite. So uh, different people's voices will be optimal at different lengths, and of course your own taste, your own what, what works for you will vary. Uh, Dynamic range can be adjusted depending on how much, how strong the background noise seems to be. Um, I'm just going to leave that out uh, as it is for now. But you can play around with that. Viewing range, sometimes you want to raise that a little bit to see a bit more, uh, sometimes not. Uh, often 5,000 5 kilohertz is a good top range there. <clears throat> now, uh, here's some sound. Ice down. Ice down. So not a lot, there's just a couple of syllables here. And what I like to do is pick out things, events that happen and, and hit the, identify them as boundaries. So I think this and this are uh, either end of this initial consonant. And that looks like 
looks like a, a vowel sequence that kind of dies off. There's a fricative, there's a stop closure, and possibly a release burst there. Done. It looks almost like a vowel nasal sequence, but I'm not sure that it's two different things. Boundary there, and so on. Right? I can you see that I'm I'm listening as well as as looking, uh, but I can uh, identify when things are happening at high frequencies, when they're happening at low frequencies. There may even be a boundary here. Uh, you use your knowledge of the visual acoustic cues. You can use that to help identify the boundaries. Uh, so far, I haven't done any transcribing in the sense of putting down sounds. Uh, but if I zoom out to everything, oops, that all button to zoom out. You see, I've already got boundaries. Um, you know, I'm almost half of the way through. But let's stick with that for now. Uh, zoom in. Oops. If I select a, a region, I hit the zoom to selection button, S E L there. Uh, I'm actually going to zoom out. I can hit out, or I can do Control O on Windows or Command. See a bit larger screen. Uh, so what's that first thing that's happening? So when I listen to it just in isolation, it almost doesn't sound like speech at all. Uh, often you need to listen uh, with neighboring sounds as well. All right. So although I hear a consonant and a vowel. What I'm really just interested in is that consonant. I now it sounds to me like a K, but there's something else going on. And in fact, this is where I'd go here. Ka, a ka. That doesn't sound quite like what it is. Here we have another kind of K. Ka, a ka. I'll go back here. I Ah, a ka. That does sound more like it. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to call that an ejective K. Okay. Uh, one of the things that you can most advantageously gain by having neighboring consonants, or neighboring vowels, I is the form and transitions can often tell you place of articulation. So that will be help you uh, firm up. Yes, that does sound like a velar. Now what do we have here? I, I. Now to me, this sounds like that uh, diphthong. And I'm going to leave it at that um, and move on. You can, of course, check your vowels against ah against the reference. I. Now this is a diphthong. You could try to cut it in the middle. Uh, I tend not to cut diphthongs because their transitions are so long that a boundary is even less meaningful there than for other types of sound transitions. Uh, but I could try to isolate the first part, for example. might be the uh, AE digraph sound. It's short enough uh, that it's hard, it can be hard to tell. But, uh, use your judgment and make your best uh, guess. I stand in hands, come I hang on. Okay, I'll just listen up to this. I I so again, that sounds like a... It, I can see that there's no voicing, so it's voiceless, looks like a fricative. So I'm looking in my voiceless fricatives, and this is. Sha, a sha. Sha, a sha. Ka, a ha. Sha, a sha. Sha, a sha. 
sha, a sha. So to me, it's between this sound and this sound, these two fricatives. Uh, let's call it the C with the tail, a sedia. Now, Prot does have its own codes that you can find in the help menu, uh, phonetic symbols. Uh, you can also copy from an online IPA keyboard. Uh, lots of ways they can get the characters in here. Um, and you go through, you see how I've been using different cues. You can look at formant values relative to other vowels. Uh, you know, for example, I see the formant here. Formant 1 seems to be congruent across these two vowels. Formant 2 also largely congruent. Form of three, so I might expect similar uh, vowel qualities uh, between the at least the first part of this diphthong and that. So I expect that to be that. And if I listen, uh, 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 ah, ah. Uh, now, to me, that's still uh, ambiguous between those two sounds. Uh, and you can leave it as ambiguous until you're sure. Uh, but there's lots of guide that, guidance that you can use with the context. Uh, you notice with the consonants, you know, we can identify them for certain as voiceless or voiced, uh, fricative or stop. Uh, lots of things that we can pick out here. Uh, so, there is more to do, of course, but I think those main ideas, what does it sound like, checking it against the talking IPA chart, and looking at the visible acoustic cues, which isn't going to include everything. It's hard to see the place cues, for example. Uh, but see what you can see, use that to inform your uh, assessment of what sound there is. And just move through it. You'll notice that I've, uh, I don't necessarily hit all of the sounds my first pass. I might do the easy ones first and come back to the hard ones. I might work on the hard ones first and come back to the easy ones. Uh, that's a workflow issue that you can decide on yourself. Um, I haven't really talked about uh, diacritics here. One of the issues that you'll find is with the diacritics you get uh, samples, especially down at the bottom here. You get a sample one or two sounds with that diacritic rather than a you know, the full spectrum of possible sounds that could take that diacritic. So you're going to have to use a bit of judgment there. It can help. This this may or may not be helpful advice, but if you can produce these sounds, that can help you with uh, making these decisions because you don't have to go to the chart every time. You might be able to produce it yourself and, and judge whether what you're producing sounds like what that person is producing. If you have a really strong sense, good sense of what you're producing out of this chart. Um, so that's another cue that you can use. Um, and another thing, uh, if you're taking a phonetics class, as most of you are, um, then this may not be as helpful, but there are different reasons that you do transcription. And sometimes you're transcribing something because you're particularly interested in a, a very specific sound, and so you'll focus your efforts on that sound and maybe not spend as much time on all of the phonetic detail across the whole utterance. So uh, fit your time to what your goal is, right? Use your time appropriately. If your goal is transcribe everything perfectly, uh, a very laudable goal, then that's what you're going to spend your time on everything. If your goal is more focused on one particular thing, then you can adjust accordingly. Um, what else? Uh, keep in mind which sounds are more common and which sounds are more for example, you know, these pulmonic consonants, the, the sounds in this chart, are generally more common than non-pulmonic consonants. Among the non-pulmonic consonants, ejectives are much more common, clicks are the rarest, and plosives somewhere in between. Okay. Um, with the vowels, most, most languages do not use all of the vowels that you see in this chart. Um, there's going to be a subset, and um, so pay attention to that. Don't throw in extra characters that you think are fun-looking just because you want to. 
you should have a positive reason to use a character that represents a, a rarer sound. I think that's all the advice that we need for this video. Um, yeah, I think that's good. Do let me know if you have questions about this. That's what I'm here for. Uh, but let's uh, see how you do. Have some fun. Uh